guys, it's Megan, and today I'm back with another 5 ways to fill your sketchbook video. Before we get started though, I wanted to take a second to let you guys know that I just made a new website. I made my website using Wix, who is nice enough to sponsor today's video. Wix is a free platform that allows you to build professional, customizable websites using their simple drag and drop editor. Wix is an incredibly robust, technologically advanced website builder that gives you total creative freedom. Whether you want to start a blog, promote your business, or make an online portfolio, Wix offers hundreds of free templates to help you get started. If you decide that you want even more features, Wix has plenty of affordable premium options to choose from. I've always wanted to start my own blog, and I'm so excited to be able to do that with Wix. If you want to create your own free website, head over to wix.com slash go slash Megan Weller. Thank you so much to Wix for sponsoring this video, and with all that being said, let's just get into it. The first idea that I have for you guys is to make your own stamps. The first way to make your own stamps is by using leaves. Go outside and find a few leaves, and then use a water-based marker to color over the back of the leaf. Take a damp paper towel and dab it onto your paper to get it slightly wet, and then press on your leaf with the marker side down. I found that I could get two prints each time that I colored the leaf. Continue doing this until your page is full of leaf prints. I used a different leaf for each marker color, so I needed three leaves altogether. When the background was done, I used a Q-tip as another stamping technique. I dipped the Q-tip into some purple paint and made dots in various sections on the page. I wanted these sections to look like the flowers on a butterfly bush. I used dark purple paint first, and then put dots of light purple paint over it to add a little bit more dimension. When the flowers were done, I made butterfly stamps using some cardboard. For these stamps, first I drew a butterfly onto a piece of cardboard and cut it out. I traced the butterfly onto a sheet of craft foam and then cut that out as well. Then I hot glued the piece of craft foam onto another piece of cardboard. This will be the base layer of the butterfly. For the details of the butterfly, I took the original butterfly that I drew and went over the lines with some puffy paint. You could use hot glue or Elmer's glue instead, but I like puffy paint because the tip is a little bit smaller and it's easier to control. When everything dries, your stamps are ready to use. I painted the foam stamp orange and pressed it onto the paper to get the basic shape. I filled in any spots that I missed with a paintbrush. When that dried, I used a small paintbrush to put black paint onto the puffy paint stamp. I stamped that on top of the orange wings and filled in any details that I missed with a paintbrush. I repeated this on the other butterfly as well. Even though I didn't get a perfect print with these stamps, it's still really helpful to get a general outline of the butterfly. These DIY stamps are great because you can make any shape that you want, and you probably already have the materials at home to make them. The next idea that I have for you guys is to do a shape drawing challenge. Draw a bunch of one specific shape on your page and see what you can come up with. I chose circles as my shape, but you could also use triangles, squares, hearts, or any other shape that you can think of. I honestly didn't overthink this too much, I just drew the first thing that came to mind for each circle. The first thing that I thought of was a clock, but I didn't want to just do a plain clock, so I drew the one from Don't Hug Me I'm Scared. I've been seeing a ton of ads for the new Toy Story movie lately, so I drew the ball from Toy Story in the next circle. I've also been seeing a ton of people painting on records lately, so I drew a record in the third circle. In the next circle I drew a donut which isn't the most creative thing ever, but hey, I had 12 circles, you know. For the fifth circle, I drew a rose. I took you guys' suggestion and got some Ohuhu markers recently. They actually just came out with brush markers and I really like them so far. They honestly might just be my new favorite marker. After that, I drew a moon, using cross hatching to shade it, and then I drew a lemon slice in kind of a cartoony style. I drew a pokeball for the eighth drawing, and I drew it at an angle instead of head-on to give it more dimension. Next, I drew a sunflower, since they have kind of a circular shape as well. Having the outer circle really helped when drawing the petals. I'll have to remember that if I ever draw a sunflower again. 
Then I drew a peach, and I tried to make it a little bit more realistic than the lemon that I drew. Using colored pencils over the markers can really help with that. I drew a Pepsi logo next, because I had just come home from Hershey Park and I was finishing my drink that had a Pepsi logo on it. For the last drawing, I drew a cookie, which isn't the best, but honestly, I was kind of done at this point. So here's how the finished page turned out. I had a lot of fun with this challenge, and it was a great way to practice drawing some things that I wouldn't normally draw. If you don't feel like doing the whole page at once, you could use this page as a warm-up each time you sit down to draw. The third idea that I have for you guys is to document an event. This could be something that already happened, or it could be something that you're looking forward to. Summer is always the busiest time for me, and I always try to do a few fun things that I might not get to do in other seasons. I decided to draw the Jonas Brothers on this page since I got tickets to see them in August. I drew them using the grid method, which I showed you guys how to do in my first art hacks video. This is the fourth grid drawing that I've ever done, so obviously it's not perfect, but using the grid method has really helped me to kind of understand how to shade and how to add highlights to my drawings. I colored in their skin using an Ohuhu marker in the color Cool Gray 00, and added shading using a regular number 2 pencil. I used a white chalk pastel to add highlights, and blended everything together using my DIY blending stump. I feel like they kind of got progressively worse from left to right, like Nick looks pretty good, Joe looks okay, and then there's poor Kevin out here, you know, always getting the short end of the stick, like Kevin, I am so sorry. Um, but anyways, I filled in their shirts using a combination of Arteza acrylic paint and Posca pens. Then I filled in the background with some yellow acrylic paint. The original image had a blue background, but I decided to make it yellow for some reason. I don't know why. So here's how the finished page turned out. It's not the best, you know, but I tried. And I plan on putting pictures from the concert on the page next to it. The fourth idea that I have for you guys is to create a character inspired by a specific year. For this drawing, I picked the year 1997. Since I obviously don't remember that year, I looked up what was popular back then. I found an article called Things We Wore in 1997 That We Wouldn't Be Caught Dead Wearing in 2017, and I thought that it was interesting that a lot of the things mentioned in that article have actually kind of come back in 2019. The article mentioned baggy overalls, butterfly clips, mood rings, and ball chain necklaces, so I included all of those elements on my character. I also gave her a choker because they were popular all throughout the 90s, I even remember having some in the early 2000s when I was little. The girl that I drew is holding a Tamagotchi because they were released in America in 1997. I colored the drawing by putting down a layer of marker first. Then I went over the marker with Prismacolor colored pencils to add shading. I've been using this technique a lot lately and I really like how it looks. I don't think that I added enough depth to her skin but I really like how the overalls and the shirt look. If I did this again, I wouldn't make the shirt pink, but it's not too bad. I used glitter glue to fill in the butterfly clips and put a little bit of it on her mood ring and Tamagotchi as well. So here's how the finished drawing turned out. I think that it would be fun to design a character from each decade. Maybe you could start at the current year and work your way back. Or you could create a character for each year that you've been alive. That might be cool too. The last idea that I have for you guys is to make a vision board for the current season. This is the time of year that I always start seeing people making summer bucket lists, which is a great idea and all, but I've probably made a summer bucket list like every year since second or third grade, and I don't know if I've ever actually completed one. Part of that is probably me making unrealistic goals, but that's another story. I like the idea of a vision board because it's more of a general thing. I used magazine images for my vision board, but you can print out images or draw your own if you want. Think about what you want to accomplish in the next few months, and try to find images that represent any goals that you have. For the background, I chose an image of water to represent swimming, a map to represent traveling, and clouds to represent just going outside more. I chose an image of a person on a bike to represent doing outdoor activities, 
and constellations because I really need to, you know, just start sleeping less and doing more. I included a hand with bracelets because I want to make a bunch of bracelets this summer. I'll probably do that on our 18 hour car ride to Florida. I put a flower because again, nature, you know, and a clock that says more stress equals less productivity. No one wants that. Then I put the words go play outside and a Polaroid camera with pictures to represent taking more photos. A goal that I set all of the time and I always fail at. I put the words out of office because I've been spending way too much time at my desk lately and a little compass. I decided to make this a two page spread since I messed up the page beside it. This page didn't have as much reasoning behind it, I just put some more summery and beachy images. I also put this exercise card where the girl is stretching because I keep like getting injured and I should probably remember to like warm up before I start exercising to try to avoid that. When I had all of my images on the page, I outlined the focal images with a sharpie, just because I like the way that it looks. So here's how the finished page turned out. Comment down below if you think that I should still make a summer bucket list, and let me know what's on yours if you made one. So thank you guys so so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and as always, make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one, and make sure to follow me on Instagram, it is at WellerMegs. And thanks again to Wix for sponsoring this video, make sure to check them out using the link in the description. And yeah, I love you guys so so much, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!